What's going on everybody? Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. Thank you for always coming back and watching the videos and if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install your water temperature sensor gauge. Uh, which I already have in my uh, car. And uh, you guys saw a tuck radiator install video. I did put the sensor onto my radiator. I replaced the drain plug with the sensor itself with a uh, adapter fitting. And today we're gonna be wiring up everything else. I just have to plug in this loom. This goes, this plug right here goes to the sensor on my radiator. And this plugs in behind the gauge and hopefully this is long enough I'm trying to uh, tuck it through my fender and the fitting that I was using is one of these uh, when you buy AM one I'm not sure about like grams or anything if you buy them it comes with this uh, fitting adapter it has two but I used the other one because it's the right size and when you buy a water temperature uh, sensor you get, you have other ones too you have oil temp you can change the bezels out transmission temperature and yeah they just have different ones white and black but I already have the gauge in my car. And one thing that actually happened last night when I took the car to go uh, meet with the Just For Fun guys at the pop-up meet, um, my shift linkage decided to act really sloppy and found out that my pin uh, came off right when I pulled into the parking lot and threw the car into reverse. So my pin came out and then it was hanging onto the shift rod boot. So luckily I didn't lose the pin and luckily the boot was holding the pin up so the whole linkage wouldn't fall out. So right when I jacked up the car over there and then uh, pulled out the shift rod boot, the bitch pin came out. And let me get, let me show you guys what happened. So this is what happened. Now, look at this, check this out. Look, look at the play that this thing has. It hits my thing. You see that? And then it's hard finding the gears. The gears go in, because uh, uh, Kevin, luckily, he had a, a bunch of bolts with him, so I used a long 10 mil with a little nut, but uh, since there's a gap, it caused a lot of play, but it was just so I could drive home, because I couldn't, because no one had a hammer, and then also there's no, because the car wasn't jacked up high enough, there's no way to like use a hammer and get enough like leverage and everything. But yeah, check that out. <laughs> but I'm gonna fix that. Uh, Probably tomorrow, I just have to go pick it up from uh, Honda. Pick up a new retainer clip. And I think it just came out because all the, like, the car vibrates a lot. So it vibrated out and the motor, yeah. So, yeah, but that's whatever. But I'll show you guys how to do this right here. Now, the gauge is already plugged in. I just need to plug that portion in on the harness and route it through my dash. And then we'll have the water temp. So, yeah, I'm going uh, to plug this up. Don't think you need any of these wires. Most likely... Oh wait, hold on, no. We're probably gonna need the ground, which is the black one, and the power, which is the red one. And I'm just tap this into my fuse box, and this ground, I'm just gonna put it um, somewhere under my dash. Uh, just like how I did my wide band gauge, and then um, should be smooth sailing from there. And the new radiator looks pretty damn nice. All right. So I'm gonna plug the sensor in, or the harness into the temp sensor, which is down here. Just like that. Now I am not too sure that this is even long enough to even go all the way around. And it is not. What I'm gonna do is actually extend the harness. So just like this. The green and the black wire, I have to extend it. This is for the gauge. And this is not long enough so I could tuck it around my fender. So I'm gonna cut this, uh, solder new wires on, and extend it into the, my gauges. And this right here, I don't need to extend it because it does split on here. So it would be a lot easier. I don't have to touch this one. This, this one I have to cut and extend. And this is two wires, so it's not too bad. So I decided I'm gonna wire it up like this. So I'm gonna run the sensor up here through the headlight, through the little headlight hole here. And it'll come down at the bottom here. But I have to take off my fender to uh, tuck it all the way through. So I'm going to take off my fender and start extending the harness and bring it over. Got the fender off, ride it through. Now I'm going to route this over here. And one thing I was sad about this show was the previous one that cut a hole into it. Um, this was like back in the day when people used to tuck harnesses. So yeah, but can't do anything about that. And I think I'm going to paint this up real quick, patch it up. So there's a little rust. 
a little right here too. But it's whatever. Um, but this harness is too short. So even if I ride it through the grommet, it won't reach all the way. So I do have to extend this either way. The diagram that it comes with, or the wiring diagram, you see the ground is black and the red is power. That's all you need and the temperature sensor. The other two wires, you don't need it. I think the other two, um, you need it if you want to data log it or something on your AM Infinity uh, ECU. I'm not too sure, but that was how it was on my white band. Extend it, pull it in, and we should be good to go. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, if you guys don't have a tuck radio or not using any lines as hoses, another way to do it is by buying one of these, which is a water temperature sensor housing is uh for your radio hose you cut a radio uh, you cut your radio hose uh somewhere a slit and then you tuck this in put the sensor on top and this hose clamping down and that's one way and there's other ways too but um yeah this is another way but i'm not using this since i'm just going to do it from the radiator itself and it's a lot more easier for me and i can't really cut into my lines and do that but um yeah so let's get to doing that and I'll show you guys in a bit. I have it all wired up. This is my outer circuit, which I use for my wideband. But this time, I'm going to be mounting the power wire to the fuse box. And this is the ground which I'm gonna put right here and it's a bit of a wiring mess in here because the car used to have an alarm and I need to fix all this and put a new alarm in. Um, but for now I'll just leave it and then uh, we're gonna put the key on and see if it turns on. If it turns on that means we're good and that's about it. So if you guys want a more detailed ex explanation on this uh, I'll link my wideband install when I did my uh, wideband. Um, it's the same thing you just wire up the power on the ground and plug the sensor and it's super easy like it's not hard it just figure out how you want to route and everything is low or it all depends on you but yeah I'm just gonna finish this up all right so I have it plugged into the fuse box and the ground so now to see if both of my gauges turn on oh there we go first click my wideband temp 66 I don't know why why does it do that why does it flash on the screen but 66 degrees now I'm gonna clean up everything and put it all back together. And I can't do anything about this right now. <laughs> gotta, I gotta wait. I'm not sure if I wired it wrong, but it's not getting hot. It's getting hot and cold. So I have, I don't know. I'm just let it sit for a bit and see, cause. It's at 68 degrees right now, but my car temp gauge is like a lot higher. It's fluctuating to be 67, 68. Uh, it's hard to say. Saw the wire temp sensor and uh, gauge and it works. I took the car down the street with the messed up shift linkage because um, I'm waiting for that um, retaining clip to come in to Honda so I can pick it up tomorrow to install it. Uh, but yeah, the temp gauge works. I guess the car was sitting still and the radiator was super cold even though the car was like warmed up on the temp gauge. But yeah, it works and everything. So, okay. I didn't want this video to be short. So sorry if I'm gonna be talking a lot right now. And it's a huge topic that people have been asking me. Well, I've been receiving a lot of comments and even sometimes DMs. 
and comments on my Instagram. So all three places or two places. And the main thing I've been getting asked is how do I afford all this stuff and why do I put so much money into the car? Because it's a Civic, which I don't understand why people even ask that. Because I mean, first off, it's like I'm gonna put money into this car because I enjoy it, I love it, and I I just I just enjoy putting uh, money into my cars because it's like a hobby. It's a good hobby. I um. I mean, I could be saving a lot of money and not buying like $500 lip and everything like that, but spending money on this car and putting it on and seeing the results of like what it looks like and running it or whatever, it just feels so good. I just get that, you just get that feeling, you know? I feel like I would be bored of my life if I'm not spending money on like anything, like a hobby or anything. I feel like the same, like I feel like I'm just bored, like there's nothing to like invest my money into. I want to say, well, this is, I would say this is an investment because it's content for you guys. And yes, enjoy it a lot. Enjoy seeing me work on the car, enjoying all the stuff that goes on in this car and everything. But also, it's an investment for myself. Yeah, I just, you know, I just put a lot of money to this car because I enjoy it. Um, same goes with the lip. I understand like how a lot of people kind of still overreact from that video because I did post up a video where I bought this lip. You know, it's a $500 lip, Spoon Sports lip, compared to you could just buy like a $200 like replica one. But it's just like, I feel like you're not, you're just, it's, 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 this is not right buying a fake one because you're like buying a fake one from the people that actually created it and they're not making money anymore because you're buying the fake one. Now, I know people are gonna dislike that because I just said that, but go ahead. I, I, I honestly could care less about all those hate comments and dislikes. So I go ahead, at the same time, all those people that feed off the negative comments and stuff, you're never gonna get over it. But I've been to the phase where I had my slam forward, I got a lot of hate comments, and that's when I just like got to the point where like, why do I even care about what people say about my car? It's my car, you know? Like, it makes me happy. Why should I worry about the car making other people happy? One of my friends, he told me, he's like, dude, why do people tell you what to do with your own car? And it's true. Because on my Instagram, I get a lot of comments They're like, you should do this, you should keep that, you should get rid of this, you should put the SR lip on. I understand that, you know, people have different opinions. I put what I feel like on my car because that's how I see it. That's how I want to build my own car. Because a lot of people nowadays build their own cars based off of other people's opinions, which you don't want to do because are you going to be happy with the car? Probably not because you're building it because of the social media and everything like that, you know? But that's how cars are nowadays or builds. But I wouldn't say like every build, but you know what I mean. Okay, back on topic though. The other thing is, how do I afford all my stuff? One is, of course, I still live with my parents, but it doesn't mean I like live off them like that. I pay for rent, I buy them stuff, you know? I buy my dad like power tools and everything. Like being able to give back to my family, you know? My parents and stuff. Because when I was younger, they always spend money on me and buy me like a Game Boy or whatever. <laughs> they buy me a lot of stuff, but now like I have money. So it's, it feels nice buying my dad stuff that he wants, you know, buying car stuff, you know, and everything like that. It's just, it feels nice. Also, I do have a daytime job. Uh, most of you guys probably know I have a daytime job, but um, I also have another job which is YouTube. Well, I wouldn't really consider this a job. It's a hobby of mine, like working on my cars, a hobby. And I'm just filming it and posting it on, like back in the day on Honda Tech and NWP, you'll post up build threads of your photo. Like you, you take a you take a photo of a bolt, you post it up in NWP. Look, I replaced all my bolts with zinc bolts and everything like that. It's just a hobby, but in reality, I actually do make money off YouTube, and it's shocking the amount I make. But yeah, I do make money off YouTube, I make money off my daytime job, and I do make money off side hustles. Now, side hustles is pretty much like grinding and everything. I paint my friends' valve covers, wrinkle paint, or whatever, I paint stuff, I'll tell them to pay me, and then look at their stuff, it's just like that. Any way to make money, take the opportunity to make the money. And I have a lot of stuff, like even if you go to Junkyard, for example, like. Like Young Static, for example. I'm going to the junkyard, pick up a harness, convert it, and then sell the harness. It's pretty much like that. Like I can easily go to the a junkyard, buy a like uncut EX harness for like 15, 20 bucks. I don't know at the, at the um, junkyard and sell it for like 100 to 200 because that's how much you can go for. Like there's a lot of ways for you to make money. I don't always rely on one source of income because I feel like if I rely on one source of income. I won't have money to spend on other things, you know, and all that. So I guess that's how I afford all my stuff. Yeah, it just it's just all about hustling and grinding. Like people are shocked like about the money or the amount I spend on here or on this car. I make money off my job, YouTube, side hustles and everything. So like anything is possible if you just put your mind to it. So there's so many ways for you to make money, you know, like literally. And me spending all the money on this car, like five dollars for a lip, you could spend five hundred bucks on a lip if you want. But that is just my personal preference. That's how I want to build my own car. And I just like quality parts because they always fit good and they look good. Spending a lot of money on this car and like real parts, it's, it's just a hobby. It's just 
It's pretty much like people collecting like toys and like comics and stuff like that. In the end, it pays off because like that comic could be like a dollar, but like in like four or five years, that comic turns up to a hundred bucks. If you guys or if uh, some of you guys like look into like spoon stuff and uh, Mugen stuff, spoon stuff like the gen first gen are really expensive. Some people buy stuff to pretty much collect it, and then later on just flip it, like those. NR10Rs, those are like $10,000 moving wheels, like it's ridiculous, but some people are willing to buy it because passion, hobby, and just being a car enthusiast. But I'm not trying to say like, oh, you, you don't you don't have, you, you shouldn't be buying fake parts or like cheap stuff or anything like that. Why am I even saying now? I feel like I'm just dragging this conversation on. Build what you want to build. I just buy what I feel like buying. Hopefully that makes sense to anybody. I feel like that whole com whatever it was just all over the place. I don't know. I feel like when I talk about stuff like this, I get just get lost. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're not. Stay tuned for the next video. I really want to drive this car, but the linkage is so messed up right now. And no leaks on the radiator. Peace out and don't listen to others. Just build your car your own way and you'll be a lot more happier with the outcome of your own car, which is how I exactly feel about this car. So peace out.